I can well understand uh, marketers wanting to hitch their wagon to uh, environmental awareness and environmental concern. It's a slightly two-edged sword because while you're addressing uh, an audience that's increasingly receptive to those sort of arguments, you're also facing uh, quite well-informed critics. And often the well-informed critics are also deeply cynical uh, or at least sceptical. We know that sustainability is a word that is used variously. Uh, across sectors. Um, it's often misunderstood and yet uh, no one's found a better word. I'm very partial to the Brundtland definition. I think that it is rich and deep, that it brought together very, very clearly the notion of environmental, social and economic, that, that there's this triple bottom line aspect to sustainability. It's not one or the other. It, it, it's each and it's all three. I know a, 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 a company like Shell uh, wants to develop the idea of the triple bottom line. You know, sustainability is environmental, but it's also got to be social, and it's got to be it's got to pay its way. Well, if that's what you that's what you mean, then say it. And I don't think the point is don't advertise, don't talk about sustainability, don't talk about the environment. I think the point is it is incumbent upon you to talk about these things incredibly carefully and with fantastic evidence, both based on current performance and on the path they intend to take from today to whatever future is being described. I think that's a good outcome, short and long term, frankly. It's probably not a good idea to use the word sustainability in marketing and communication, as we have seen, because it, it can, it's interpreted in different ways by different people. For us, sustainability is this whole approach to the way that we work, balancing economic, environmental and social factors. Okay? We are an economic entity, and therefore the economic factors are, are, are very important. But also, if we don't get the social and environmental side right, we lose what we call the license to operate. So we have to sort of look at how we work, what happens at the front end of the business? How do we work with local communities? How do we address any environmental challenges that come with, the, with our business? And if we can reflect that properly through our communications, I think that we've sort of told the story of sustainability without using the actual word. I think there are, there are reasonable messages around comparative advertising. And perhaps the important thing is to say, don't, don't confuse the comparative and the absolute. If what you mean is greener, say greener. Don't just say green. I think for us, the big thing is to encourage Shell to use those advances that they're making and use those in their in their advertisements where they can cite specific examples where they're making a difference because of the work they're doing. That's a perfectly leg legitimate point to make. I, I think we only get into trouble when we get slightly overexcited and um, just make a bigger claim than can actually be supported. I think you're only in danger of getting into the area of greenwash if your actions don't um, carry equal weight with your words. And it is, I, and I've seen this a great deal in companies, fortunately none of them are our members, but um, rhetoric and words can get well ahead of business performance. We cannot avoid advertising because it's part of the communications mix and it's a very important part of it. Um, I, but I think we have to be very careful that we, that we come in with you know, facts and that, and that we don't overstate them. And sometimes the creative enthusiasm leads us to to apparently overstating claim. We don't think we're doing it, but you can read it a different way. So, it, in, you know, it's a constructive challenge that we get. And, 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 uh, and um, I think that the regulator will have to be a lot more, more clearer in, in saying, so, so this is what you can say and this is what you can't say. That would be very useful for us. I think there's been a, a real coalescing of the position uh, of the super majors. They've pulled together under a similar language, uh, a similar public policy position. Uh, lots of turning to government and saying, you, you know, it's up to you to give us good policy that we can follow. Uh, this company has at one point said, you know, government sets the mix and we provide the best fuels, you know, within that mix. There's no question that we have a failure of political leadership vis-a-vis -vis sustainability at the present time and probably again particularly around climate. But uh, that, that to me is not an excuse for, you know, five of the ten largest and economically and politically most powerful private institutions on the planet not to take a more aggressive leadership position themselves. Uh, I think there's more they can do to stimulate high quality debate. I think they have to be engaged. I don't think there's any possibility that the oil companies can withdraw from this debate around sustainability generally or environment specifically. But the bottom line for me is that in communicating 
uh, sustainable actions by companies, you must be able to point immediately to products and services that the given company produces. Um, you can't just speak in general terms about good intentions. And I think the minute you, you go into that realm, you are greenwashing. If I was advising somebody on how to confront greenwash and, and the potential, you know, allegations of or, or just falling into the trap, you know, I'd, I'd be begging the organization to test the authenticity of what they're saying. Not only their intent, but their ability to back it up with examples of the actions that they're taking that, that match their intent. Some NGOs may, can seem to be very narrowly focused because they have you know, a particular species or a particular section of sustainability you know, as, as their sort of issue that they deal with. They're very necessary because they develop expertise in that arena and if they're open to dialogue and if we're open to dialogue we can actually progress together with, with NGOs. You know, it is absolutely clear that the, the non-government sector in this debate, the green organisations in the energy debate, would argue that non-renewable resources are not sustainable. So, you know, there are learnings in this for Shell. It, it is probably, um, you know, not to mix metaphors, but really throwing, um, throwing fat on the fire to try and argue that non-renewable resources are sustainable. That doesn't mean that Shell isn't doing extremely good work in all sorts of ways to mitigate its own impact, to develop renewable sources of energy, to do a whole range of things to do with uh, biodiversity offsets. Shell, in fact, is a very, very impressive company from a sustainable development point of view. But there are some bottom lines in terms of some of their key stakeholders, um, green organisations in particular, who will never, ever accept that fossil fuels are sustainable. Some NGOs tend to want to have companies like Shell as a projection surface to sort of galvanize their own work and that's quite okay but they also have to understand that we have to deal with a wider group of stakeholders, governments, customers, our own employees, business partners and so on and so forth. So they may see us as being less focused than they are but that's also okay because the most important thing is that we talk to each other and try to come to some sort of understanding of the basic facts and the issues at hand. You need to read your stakeholders well. Um, the, the green movement uh, is not diminishing, it's growing if anything. Civil society organisations are growing and it does mean constant and careful dialogue uh, with these kind of stakeholders and very robust and, and honest discussions about what is going on. Um, it's a mistake not to think that, the, that uh, civil society can't mobilise quickly. Civil society can mobilise extremely quickly. Non-government organisations are nimble and they represent a very large amount of public opinion and it's incredibly important to um, engage robustly and honestly with them. And maybe one of those honest discussions will be around this very point of um, the nature of uh, fossil fuels versus other forms of energy. A responsible advertiser wants to get everybody who's involved in marketing, corporate affairs, PR, compliance, legal, whatever it is, all focused on making the case that Shell wants to make, but making it within the rules. I think that public expectations around the environment are increasing, have been consistently increasing, and we might expect a continued acceleration of that interest and therefore greater pressure for more clarity around communications and more evidence of improved performance. I think we have to be part of the debate because we are at the center of it. Energy is a controversial issue and it's a very difficult and very necessary thing to talk about.